Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash I stream up on my knee. It's Green Day, and the man that sounded like he just burped into the microphone. Was <laughs> <"Bip -bip." laughs> I actually did then, yeah. That, that was definitely a burp. I tried not to belch it out, but you know, my mic's obviously that good that you can hear it through the old uh, windpipe in the, in the throat. Oh, yeah. my, my microphone is absolutely miles away. I completely forgot. I moved it yesterday while I was doing something, so. Uh, do I sound much clearer now? Yes, you do. <laughs> Uh, oh, I also have my pop shield on my screen. Can't be having that. I need to get rid of it. I mean, I like the clean look. There we go. Uh, but anyway, welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are live on Twitch uh, with the Scoop, the UK's number one video games podcast. Uh, I mean, we say that you'd have to. You can agree. So I don't know. It's entirely your decision. But anyway, my name is Graham. I'm joined by Bib, and we are Ice Cream Uploads. And like I said, this is the Scoop. We bring your daily dose of news from the world of video games and beyond. And if you're in the chat, please. Please feel free to use your right to say, say well, exactly what John has just said. What, what has John just said, Ben? Hello! I'm just guessing because I'm still typing a tweet. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what he just said. Good morning, Jordan. I'll read. Um, but anyway, if you don't know what the scoop is, like I said, this is uh, our daily video game talk show. We turn this into a podcast that goes live on YouTube and four different audio locations. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And throughout this show, and on the on-demand service, obviously, because it's the same thing, we give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games. And what your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions and and it's important that you do because as we as we say we turn this into a podcast that goes out in all the places later on today so feel free to use the opportunity to get involved in the chat and speak on behalf of those that are only listening on demand use your voice in place of those that's 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 what we want you to do uh but yesterday babe mm -hmm. it was an absolute torrential downpour uh <laughs> thunder lightning everything um it started uh, just as I went off uh, from the PUBG stream yesterday with Jordan, because um, as as we we're trying to do the sign off, Jordan kept going. Ah! <laughs> it's like what the f <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? He's like, did you hit the lightning? I was like, all right, only you can see it. The rest of Twitch chat can't see anything. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> but then, but then after that, I went to pick Chloe up from school, and it just absolutely bounced down, thunder and lightning and everything, which we don't we don't we haven't had for ages. I can't remember the last time we had a thunder and, uh, thunder and lightning in Salford land, but yeah, well, apart from the, the shocking weather, did you get out too much yesterday? Uh, I'm actually trying to think now. I don't think I did. I think, oh, with, <laughs> me and Samantha ended up watching uh, Shameless is on Netflix now, and if anybody do hasn't heard of Shameless before, Believe me, Manchester is not like what it's been represented. Well, not completely. I was going to say, I mean, I, I came to Huddersf uh, from Huddersfield to Manchester when that was kind of like a thing, and it just looks exactly the same to me. So, <laughs> oh, oh, baby's frozen. On like the smoothest yeah. face in the world. Oh, there he's back again. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, uh, I couldn't hear you then. You just completely went. <laughs> I said uh, that. down, but I, I mean, you can guess what I was saying. I came from Huddersfield yeah. as that, so I was like. Basically, uh, slating it, and then you, uh, you kind of got frozen with an A. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's not completely like that, but it, it is in, in some areas. So, yeah, we started watching that again. It's definitely ran its course, and watching some of the stuff that was allowed on TV then, I'm highly certain it would never be allowed on TV now. I just think it would just be ripped off the TV. Like, I think it's episode one, you see Kev roll over, and he's just got his knob out. You see the whole thing. It's <laughs> I'm sure that was on at like nine o'clock. I mean, it's past the watershed, but I don't think they get away with it on Channel Four now. But yeah, it was it's a very, very, very funny. Well, that um, it was made quite a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, um, it must have then, stayed. Yeah, started watching Stalker as well. Uh, you started watching Stalker. I was going to say watching Stalker. I thought that was a game. I don't know. Yeah. Start playing Stalker. Fantastic game. Um, yep. So breaking news: Bibby was playing Stalker last night. Fun fact. Anyway, we won't say any more on that. We'll just leave it there and we'll move ahead. <laughs> Outside, it was raining. You know what I mean? If it wasn't raining, then perhaps, but it was so. Uh, David says it must have stayed over that side of the Pennines. There was no rain or thunder over here. I absolutely smashed it. Yeah. That's the thing. When the rain comes this way, though, when it hits the Pennines, full on geography lesson out. When it hits the Pennines, it breaks, so it doesn't tend to go over, which is why a lot of people will say um, Manchester's. A rainy place. It's always raining in Manchester. That's because of the Pennines and the, the wind direction. But anyway, geography a level in the bin. Get out of here. I uh, played PUBG with Jordan. 
and then didn't do much. I just kind of laid on the couch because moving is ridiculous at the moment with all of the exercise stuff that we're doing in the morning. Uh, I mean, I've never taken being able to just lift up a brew for granted before, but yeah, at the moment, lifting up a brew just kind of, it has a sound effect now. So I reach out for my cup and it's like, a, uh, and I pick up my cup and it's like, ah, uh. so yeah, uh, did that again this morning. That was fun. Um, my whole, my whole like shoulders, chest, my back and everything all just in bits. And it's like, like you do, you do, I don't know, bicep curls or something like that. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. T 10 keys, 20 keys, whatever, 100 keys. I could, I could, I could kill that. No problem. Anyway, doing these exercises with only like one and a half kilos on it or something like that. I'm thinking, oh, this is fine. But after you've been like dancing around, like squatting and, and all the rest with, with one and a half kilo in each other, by the end of it, you're just like, oh, <laughs> full on octopus <laughs> arms. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Like I say, other than that, PUBG's this and da, 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 yeah, back here again. But um, anyway, let's get into things, and we kind of need to do that because we've got a few stories. There's been a few more bits breaking as we've been live on air, so we might be able to tack those on the end of the show today. If not, we'll, we'll feature them in, in the content tomorrow. I've, I've literally just, we've just organised potentially one of the biggest things that's going to be happening on Twitch. Um, that includes our channel. Bibi gets his lad out. That's what it is. <laughs> oh yeah, T, T, toss, 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 toss. That's service terms, service terms. I'm going to say nothing. I'm going to say don't, don't be tossing. <laughs> I'm going to say when you get your lad out. Um, see, I can't, how is it? I can't. I don't know how to pronounce this. I know it's Latin, but is it like a? Is it Pakilukend? <laughs> I don't know. Thank you very much I for the I raid. I love hearing you trying to pronounce stuff because I have an absolute nightmare and that's why you tell me to pronounce stuff. <laughs> but hearing you try to do it, it's good. It's, it's brilliant. Oh, see, I wasn't too far away. Pakilukend. I know, I know the actual word in Latin where you've got an X is an E as far as I remember. And what does it mean? Is it like hear of a few oh, words or, or don't... Like, Something, something to do with not saying much or, or something saying something yeah. or whatever. I know it means Cam's something. told me like four times and I forget every single time and I do apologise, mate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, I do appreciate the raid. Bang on, Graham. There we go. Yeah. I knew it was something like that. Um, but I, I pronouncing it, like, I'm, yeah, my, my Latin's not very good. My English isn't very good, so my Latin's got absolutely no chance, to be fair. But uh, thank you very much for the raid and triggering the ice cream van uh red sound effect as well so yeah welcome in welcome in what you've been playing is it pez it's pez in it is it pez is it pez tell me uh but we're just about to jump into the news we've got a few stories to fly through because we're jumping on with masters of the league after this we're on episode 15 is it 15 uh, episode 15 yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. episode 15. Sorry, uh, uh, 2k <laughs> i've just started to get involved with these tweets for the for the pga which is great uh, let's see. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing this, seeing this. This is going to be absolutely fire. I'm going to be fucking skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to be there just, just, just mocking from a distance, a safe distance. <laughs> uh, like, it's like thinking, of, um, oh, shit. What's he called from uh, the Simpsons? Nelson. <laughs> In the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There we go. So for those of you, do you know what, let's jump into that first. For those of you that don't know what Bibby's talking about, it's this. Uh, where, it, actually, let's go into split screen as well. There we go. Uh, Bibby's talking about this. Bibby tweeted this earlier on. I can't wait to play this game. Um, it's, it's boring golf. It's boring golf. It's fine. It's not a joke. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It's okay. Don't, don't, it's fine. Uh, Bibby is obviously hyped for PGA Tour 2K. Um, so, in response to that, friend of the channel, Phantom, uh, says, ooh, I'll be playing this for sure. And then Paul, also friend of the channel, says, let's make it a three ball, lads. And then that's where the conversation kind of went. Fandom throwing out this an hour ago. Golf night, five gifted entry, winner takes all. So if there's those three, all putting five gifted subs in, winner walks away with 15 gifted subs. Uh, 75 quid's worth of prize. Not bad, not bad. Put your balls where your mouth is. Oh, wait, wait, that sounded better in my head, he said. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, all in wads adds an additional five gifted off each player. I'm in. Uh... Kinel, uh, you lads have made money then. For a skin person like me, I propose squad stream, four gifted entry, four rounds of golf, lowest overall score, wins every hole in one, adds another gifted to the winner's channel uh, from each of the, the, the two channels. Love this, I'm in. There we go. And 2K getting involved as well at the end. Hey, yay. This is going to be fire. Like, 
I can't tell you how much I was excited for this game. Anyway, the gameplay trailer dropped yesterday as well as the announcement trailer, which looks phenomenal compared to what we've had with the golf club. Now 2K have come in and spiced it up a lot. It looks like a proper 2K game, and that's what I wanted from a golf game. Like EA did a really good job back way back when with Tiger Woods, but the Rory McIlroy game, I don't know if anyone ever played it, but it was fucking garbage. It was like the same four courses all over. You couldn't upgrade your clubs. The the, the choice of play selection was terrible. The customization was terrible. 2K have added a lot of spice to this new game. And if we can make it a community game, then that for me is even better. I haven't been able to play with your friends without having to, like to play with your friends on the golf club is a nightmare. Like, it's not as simple as just joining each other's games and then you can just tee off. It's an absolute nightmare. So <clears throat> having stuff like this where we can just jump in and just play, 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 upgrade your clubs, buy new, uh, buy new pairs of pants and make your drive go a little bit longer. Buying proper clubs, like in the golf club, you can't buy pink clubs, you can't buy tailor-made clubs, you can't buy Callaway clubs, you can't buy tightless balls if you wanted to. All of that doesn't exist, but now it does. Do you mean tit -lized? So this is going to be a proper, proper <laughs> sim, and that's what I'm loving. tit -lized. Titleist. Titleist. <laughs> Titleist. Ah, that's what it says. Titleist. Uh, Paul with the final comment. Think it's only right that this is named the Ice Cream Open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So. Phantom, Phantoms are um, also bait in 2K with Streamer Showdown. Chances for viewers to win copies of the game. <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be huge. Uh, but anyway, I'll stick a pin in that. We'll keep, we'll keep you updated on that. If you're interested in golf, then, uh, you know, you know, keep your eyes on that. Keep your eyes on that. Um, David says, "When did you learn Latin? I've only just learned Roman numerals. Uh, yeah, just, just make it up as you go along. It's fine." Um, Alm says, "KFC Golf Hyde United in that order." <laughs> uh, the golf game was fun when I played with Eha and Guavs. Uh, have you uh, ever been titmatized? Uh, I have. <laughs> yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> to us, to us. Uh, first bit of news of the day, other than that, is that the Steam Game Festival Summer Edition has kicked off. This is written by Stefan Nunley for VZ247, and the article says, The Steam Game Festival Summer Edition has kicked off, and there are plenty of demos to try. Demos are now available for various indie games through the Steam Game Festival Summer Edition, which is going now through to June the 22nd. Like the previous Steam Game Festivals, it offers free demos to Steam users. You can also watch games being played, develop talks, uh, and there will also be live Q&As. I was going to uh, take the article off then, just so we can watch Bibi like go on full ham, rubbing his eyeball then, but he stopped now. <laughs> yeah, because I've got this fan behind me, my eyes are just constantly watering, but I need it on because it's red hot. Where did I get to? Um... Yeah, so I'll, I'll read that again. Like the previous Steam Game Festivals, it offers free demos to Steam users. You can watch games being played, developer talks, and there will also be live Q&As. During the festival, all games can be found on one Steam hub, and each listing will take you to the respective store pages. Once there, you can learn more about the titles and download the demos. The first Steam Game Festival was held in 2019 and took place alongside the Game Awards. A spring edition took place in March and featured over 40 demos of titles meant for the postponed GDC 2020 event. This is the third Steam Game Festival and the largest yet with over 40 demos featured this past spring and now over 900 titles in the summer edition the summer edition of the festival was originally slated to run june the 9th to june the 14th uh bib mm -hmm. summer game festival thoughts uh, i absolutely love this it's something that we brought up over the last couple of months when we're referencing demos in video games this is absolutely dynamite in my opinion these are companies that are making proper demos for their games so people can actually get a look at them have a get to grips with them have a feel of them this is an absolute throwback on the the nostalgia trip for people of our age i know i'm a little bit younger than you but we still grew up with, with the same playstation magazines the same demo discs and stuff like that so kids like my brother who's only 14 he, he's probably never seen a demo disc in his life um so having the opportunity to go into steam and try these games out um whilst also picking up some tasty deals in this at the same time is unbelievable and 900 titles are available to try demos for uh, sorry over 40 demos featured this past spring and now over 900 titles in this summer edition so that means there's 900 demos available in it which is so ridiculous. There was 40 last year and 900 now that is stupid that is absolutely stupid I'd, uh 
I was trying to see. It shows if, the success, though, doesn't it? I was trying to see how many it was in 2019. So it started in 2019, and that's when the likes of Sniper Ghost Warrior and Roki, if Asim's in the chat, um, I believe Roki was in it, uh, as, if not Sniper. Anyway, some of the games that Asim was working on were in uh, a, a Steam Game Festival, and that was where I first uh, found out about it. It was like, oh, I'm going to have to have a look into this then. Anyway, I was like, I, I, we've said previously, this sounds class. Being able to, I mean, being able to play games, the, the, the concept of a demo is good for me anyway, because I could know, yeah, I like this game. I do actually like, like playing it, but I'm not going to buy it. So I'm, I'm not going to resent it and waste my money on it. I'll put my money elsewhere. Or a game that I, that I thought, oh, maybe I'll give it a try. I could act, uh, absolutely earn, uh, earn my money off that. So this is class. And seeing how, how much it's grown. So it started last summer. Then there was supposed to be a GDC event in, in um, was it March? Yeah, March, which obviously got pwned, uh, postponed because of COVID. Um, so there was 40 demos in the spring one. We're now into the summer one. We've gone from 40 to 900 demos. That is huge. <laughs> it just shows the success of last year, really, doesn't it? People, I, I, we, we've said it plenty of times and the people the lads in the chat who are here every single day have also said the same thing they would love the opportunity to be able to maybe not have the demo discs all the time because that you're trying to there's a there's a reason we're moving into digital age you know what i mean so being able to go back and play some demos um of potential games that are coming out one it could potentially save you money if you don't like the game like there's been games recently where we've you know been drooling over um, and then turns out it's probably not the kind of game that we're actually going to be into. So the fact that we've got over 900 titles to potentially run 20 to 30 minutes of a game um, is, is is ideal. I absolutely love it. It's, it's not just being able to play the demos, but it's the fact that the developers have gone to the trouble of creating demos of their games because that doesn't happen anymore. It's, it'll only be certain AAA games will give you a demo like for, for the last couple of games we've had resident evil demos that's cool and they've just been little snippets from the game they haven't been purpose well they have been purpose made because of obviously chopped off uh play certain things that could potentially be spoilers um but these have been purpose made for people to get a run at the, this is bringing the expos to your home which is phenomenal especially at this point in time where we can't can't really leave the house and go into crowded areas like going to expos and going to gamescoms and going to gdc's and going to e3s where you get to play five ten minutes of a demo at a kiosk and then move on to the next one so having 900 games at our fingertips to be able to play in the comfort of our home is amazing we should we should make actual expos live on ice cream uploads so basically you download a demo when we tell you to so we can all we can make a queue for Let's say Cyberpunk's probably not going to be in there because it's coming out soon. We tell everyone to download Cyberpunk, and then you can all stand in line for two hours before you get to play it live on Ice Cream Uploads. So we've got... Go on, Bib. Your turn now. You sit down. So so we can then let Bib start playing the game on stream. And then after about ten minutes, when Bib's just about to do something really cool, go, sorry, but that's your time up now. Get out. Uh, and then someone else can go, and we'll do it over and over again. You get the full feel of a festival. I mean, the better, this is kind of better than that, because you don't, you don't have that shit. You don't... I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I do like expos, and I do like uh, games, events, in that sort of sense. But... I, I, I you don't like the lurgy and the cold sores afterwards, though, do you? Oh, no, no. Uh, con <laughs> flu can get in the fucking sea, but, but um, I mean, I, well, I'm a northern man, so queuing just queuing, standing in a, in a queue waiting for summit. Don't be daft. It's not for me that. So, so yeah, it's this is that, but without any of the queue shit. So you can just go, okay, well, the games I want to play at this this uh, expo are, I don't know what what. The PGA Golf game, Cyberpunk, and whatever. I mean, I don't know if the, those games are going to be in it. I'm just naming those because those games that we've, we've mentioned already. You could just download the demo for those three, play them back to back. Job's good, Bosh. Um, yeah. Uh, I well, see. Ho you. Hopefully, the demos won't be that weighty as well because you don't really want to be downloading a 10 gig demo. You want quick, I don't know, <laughs> a gig and a half, two gigs max. Um, especially for people who haven't got great connections. So you're able to fly through these because on, they're only available for a certain amount of time, aren't they? So yeah. being able to try as many as you can, as long as they're not stupidly big size. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to be waiting. For, 
you don't want to be waiting like a day and a half to be able to download a 30 gb <laughs> army and that would be absolute pauper internet if that's the case but try the uh, cod black ops cold war demo start downloading it now and you get it will literally like being an expo you have to wait in a queue for five days that's the download time you start playing it and then they kick you off just as just as you get into it because you've run out of time well, i haven't opened it yet but what would be great is if you could preload them and just put and they all become active on the day so if there was games that you were looking forward to, you could download seven or eight, nine, or however many you wanted. Um, and then they'll only be active from X day to X day. And then you're able to play them. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, jumping back through the chat. Good morning, Mr. Chucky Boy. one, two, three, four, chat VIP. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome in. Good morning, Madge, as well. Um, uh, hopefully not filled with gammon quality demos. Uh, precision gammon as well. Oh, P3. 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 I see you, Tasters and Licks Expo. Hey. Yes. Okay, there you go. That's it. Uh, get, get your games downloaded now. We'll tell you when you can play one. We'll tell you when the queue starts. And the queue is literally you just sitting staring at us on stream. We won't be doing anything. We won't be playing anything because it's like an expo. We'll, occasionally, we'll give you some sort of market, marketing lessons. Like, um, uh, messages should have said, like, oh, out now on Steam. And then we'll just, just cap because that's what happens. That's all you get exposed to when you're in a queue for a game at an expo. You may, you may get a company that has iPads in a queue so you can play like the mobile version of the game or something like that yeah we're not going to give you that we're just going to keep going out now on steam uh or pre-order now and then that's kind of it and then and then after two hours you can play them no nobody wants that no no okay well the events cancelled that fine um uh, i feel all down not only do i remember demos on cassettes floppies and cds now two of those formats are dead and there's a generation of kids who have never ha even had demos <laughs> i'm with you on that says magic man uh oh arm says oh p Three. <laughs> uh, magic man. Ice cream melted equals demo expired. Get out of here. Uh, game over. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? We'll, we'll we'll give this a bit of thought, and then we'll realise that it's probably not going to work. So we'll just we'll just go ahead with a golf thing instead. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Okay. That's good because that means Bib gets to do it, and I can sit and watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, unless. Do you know? What? Yeah, do you know actually? I was going to ask people a question, but but we'll talk about that off stream. We'll move forward though. We'll, no, I was, it was about the golf thing. I was going to say because we were talking about doing something like that previously, like almost mm -hmm. like the, um, the what do we call it? Threes, three wall. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we could do that sort of stuff. But but yeah, we, need, we might need the studio and shit for that. So anyway, we'll move on. We'll move forward. We'll move, move forward. Um, next story. Which one should we go for? Let's go. Let's jump into this one. <clears throat> so next bit of news of the day, I'm um, going to try keep up this pace as well because we've got three or four more stories to go and then obviously we've got Masters of the League, episode 15, we're closing in on the end of the season so we want to get into that with a bit of time so we can do that justice. So next bit of news is that EA's smart delivery alternative currently won't upgrade physical PS4 games for the digital only PS5. Ooh, curveball. Publisher's dual entitlement scheme debuts with Madden NFL 21. So EA has announced that players who buy a physical copy of Madden NFL 21 won't be able to get a free upgrade if they buy the discless next-gen console. The publisher said on Tuesday that the latest entry in its long-running sports franchise will be released worldwide on August the 28th for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC via Origin and for the first time Steam ahead of its Google Stadia release this winter. As part of EA's dual entitlement scheme, players who purchased a game for the PS4 or Xbox One will be able to upgrade their copy to a next gen version free of charge until Madden's uh, NFL 20 until Madden NFL 22's release however there are exceptions as EA says physical discs cannot currently be upgrade uh, be used to upgrade to the discless consoles it adds in an FAQ EA are actively looking at solutions to support those players who want to convert their physical copy to a digital entitlement currently no upgrade pathway exists from disc to digital for those partners who offer a next gen uh, generation discless console but we will continue to share any progress made in that space 
Um, this means that players who purchase a disc, a disc based version of Madden NFL 21 for PS4 won't be able to claim a free copy of the game for the recently announced PS5 digital edition console. Microsoft is also reportedly planning to announce a cheaper next gen console uh, titled the Xbox Series S, and it's previously been claimed that it won't feature a disc drive. EA has chosen to implement its own next gen upgrade scheme rather than use Microsoft's smart delivery technology, which will let players buy a game once and play it across Xbox One and Xbox Series X. On Monday, Microsoft confirmed that both physical and digital games will support smart delivery, including Game Pass titles. Sony has yet to announce whether it will offer a similar next-gen upgrade scheme, although it has reportedly informed developers that any PS4 games submitted for certification from mid-July must also be compatible with PS5. It's unclear whether EA's dual entitlement scheme will be used for the publisher's other games, but VGC has contacted the company for comment and EA says it will have more news on the next generation as we approach EA Play Live uh, on June the 18th. I just want to mention that I keep mentioning that EA Play Live is on Friday, but it's absolutely not. It's on Thursday, it's tomorrow. Um, so so EA released the Madden NFL 21 trailer at the top of this page on Tuesday and confirmed NFL MVP and Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson as the game's cover athlete. Um, it revealed several new features too, including the skill stick, ball carrier system, pass rush and tackling improvements and user controlled celebrations. The game will also include Face of the Franchise Rise to Fame, a playable documentary career campaign where players create themselves and play through their rise to fame from high school uh, quarterback. This week's delayed EA Play Live showcase will feature Star Wars Squadrons, blah blah blah, blah. yeah, we went all, all that stuff. Um, um, let's hit play on the trailer whilst we're here. Keep it muted though, because you know, DMCA EA yeah, does like a good bit of soundtrack on that trailer. So, Bib, EA mm -hmm. Smart Delivery mm -hmm. not available for discless consoles. Obviously, we, yeah. we the main point of conversation there is the uh, PS5 digital edition because that has been confirmed what hasn't been confirmed but is is still possible and still fairly likely is the Lockhart or the Xbox Series S not having a disc drive either and also being a discless edition so buying a disc on on the current gen doesn't give you access to it on the next gen what are your thoughts uh first of all I want I want to uh, after you finish blowing your nose I'm going to ask you do you think it's fair Um. Uh, oh, oh, Madge actually helping me out there. Just to jump on that, Madge says tune in on Friday, nineteenth of June, twelve a.m. UK on EA.com. Oh well, there you go. So technically, it is Friday in the UK. Yeah. Uh, so we so won't be staying up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, do you know, what? United would have smashed Spurs then. There'd be a few beers in. So yeah, jobs are good. I'd be fine. I'll stay up for that. Um, do I think it's fair? Isn't at midnight. Yeah, yeah. Friday morning. Oh, is it? Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, 12 yeah, PM. yeah. No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, I, I see, I don't know why. It why? Saturday. Yeah, I, I, the 18th is ingrained into my head as Friday, <laughs> which is why I've been saying it's Friday all week. So, I mean, it technically is Friday, but that's not the reason why I was saying it. Do you know? What? I'll probably be still awake at midnight on Thursday night anyway, so I'll probably watch that. But um, uh, let's take this off screen. Do I think it's fair? Um, I. Jordan has a comment in the chat. Where is it? Oh, it's just there. Uh, ouch! Here it starts. Lol. But I see why. How would uh, how would you prove? Um, yeah, that's the thing. Is it's 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 difficult. I do. I, I do think it's fair. Just just saying, I do think it's fair. Yeah. So for instance, on the PlayStation, if you was to put, uh, if you was to have a disc version of a game and you put it in the console, you can play it. If you take the disc out. The panel still shows it's there, but it has a disc icon on there, so it knows that you are playing a disc rather than a download. Even if you own a physical copy of the game, you can't go onto the store, uh, onto the store, and download that game, even though you own a physical copy, because it knows that you probably have sold, or moved on, or lost your disc, and then you are getting a free copy. I think it's, I think it's fair, me personally. No, if you I... own a physical copy of the game, then that's fair. If you, if you own, if because you've got a disc-based PS4. If you go and buy a discless version of the PS5, you could have sold everything to do with your PS4, and you don't even own a, f a physical copy of the game anymore. So why would they give you a why would they give you a digital one? Yeah, I agree. I agree, especially when you put it that way. I, I agree. I mean, I was I was thinking it's it, it 
it's a charged headline. It's a charged headline because you're all instantly thinking, oh, oh, smart delivery is not, not there. And it's it's come from a place of trying to make the Xbox versus PlayStation rivalry. And it's not that because even, like it says within there as well, I mean, Xbox have the, the advantage of having a little bit of time to wait to see this gets figured out or something by EA or, or whatever. But um, yeah, I agree. It's It's not... It's not clear cut as oh well I've got it so I've got it for next gen. I mean what what if say next gen's version of the game if you're buying it costs fifty quid and you can just buy a second hand version of Madden off of eBay for five quid just to say oh well I've got one bosh that's it they give, give me access to it. I mean how do you prove then? That, I mean it's not like it's a PS4 where you can stick it in and and, and it recognises oh that's actually the disc. How do you get access to it then? You, it doesn't work. It literally isn't the right format. So it's it's a sensationalized headline to try and kind of almost have the oh so so yeah. smart delivery isn't actually that great. Oh, we're not actually getting what we want from the next generation. Or is Xbox doing it better than PlayStation? Or are they both? It's 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 kind of pretty common sense. You've bought a disc. Yeah. It doesn't work if you don't put it in a disc drive. It's not it's not like like if someone says. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Here, here you go, Bib. There's a there's a Rustler's microwavable burger, um, but it doesn't work or in your coffee machine. It's like yeah, but I've just paid a shitload of money for this coffee machine. Yeah, but it's 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 microwavable burger, mate. Yeah, but yeah, but I've got a brand new coffee machine that I've just spent money on. It's literally a microwavable burger. There is no yeah. mic. It's like it's. I know it's, that's a bit of a daft explanation, and I just wanted to get burgers in there because you know standard. Uh, <laughs> but, no, but I mean, it's, it is it is the same analogy. If you've got if you've got a disc. And then you get a new console and it doesn't have a, a disc drive. Then why why do you think that you deserve a digital copy of the game? Yeah, like, it doesn't work like that. If it was digital and then you get an instant digital version, that's fine because you bought that from the store. It knows that you've got the digital license for that game. That works. But if you've got a physical, you've chose to buy the licensing of that game physically, and you were if you ain't got a disc drive in the new console, then unfortunately your rights for owning a digi- uh, a physical copy of that license has expired. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the only way that I can, that's the only way that I can put it as simply as it, uh, as I can. I mean, it can, like you said, it kind of comes down to common sense. Me, I would be screwed, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a console with a disc drive because it potentially has backwards compatibility for all of my old PlayStation games. Yeah, and there's options. no I, I, as a collector, I want a disc drive anyway because I like to have the physical media. But I would I wouldn't complain if there was only a di- digital versions available on the day, and I had to get one of those. Then I wouldn't complain because that was, that was my choice. I I know the risks of getting a digital console if I have purely physical media beforehand. That's just me. Just trying to find a way to get the title. EA Smart Delivery alternatively currently won't upgrade physical PS4 games for the digital only PS5. Uh, into a title where you've only got like half. Do you know what? Let's just have EA's smart delivery and leave it as that. We'll do, that can Morning, Rice. Just what we're talking about. Um, David says, you would have thought uh, that they would do like the DVD slash Blu-ray with Ultraviolet where you get the physical version and the digital version if you register one time according to the account. See, see that's not a bad idea because if they know this is coming, can't why can't they just put that in? But then how do you do that uh, in terms of like if if I buy a disc... And it has Madden in it, and it also has a digital code for Madden in it. Um, what's to stop me from playing on the disc and giving Bibby the digital code so that we can both play at the same time? Because then they're losing out on sales. Then, um, yeah, well, that's what vinyls do, don't they? If you buy a vinyl, chances are there will be a redeem code in there as well, so you can have a digital copy of it. Like all if that, that's happened with all the vinyls that I've got, and I've got quite a few next to me here. If I went in there, like my Liam Gallagher one, for instance, there's a little redeem a voucher there that I can go into a Google Play, type in the redeem code, and then I've got a digital version of the album too. But these are priced accordingly. If you used to buy a, a, a CD version of them, the chance that it'd be ten pound, paying twenty five quid for a vinyl. So you've, you're kind of paying double the price and more to be able to have that facility. So if if they said, okay, Madden is usually forty five quid on release. If you pay seventy pounds on release. Then you'll get a digital version once a, a one-time code to redeem on the platform of if you buy a ps4 version you have to redeem it on your ps5 so when the ps5 comes out you get to redeem it would that suit everyone would that be okay with everyone if you had to pay double the price or the price plus 
twenty percent or whatever. See, I'm I'm not on board with the uh, the doubling of the price sort of element. Um, I I think that's just you just kind of almost have to take it on the chin. Buy it, buy it twice if you want it twice. Yeah. Uh, if you're buying if you're buying a specific version, like say you're buying it on disc on a console that has a digital option right now. Um, but then you buy just the digital only version going forward, then that's a decision that you're making. Uh, so, I can, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't see putting like almost doubling the price because very few people are going to buy that then because most people are just going to buy the digital one and then move forward or buy the disc one and then just go, well, I'm not, I won't bother with it, or I'll just buy it when it comes down in price later on or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Jordan mentions, um, oh, you did actually say good monitor as well. I'm just jumping that. So, lads, uh, um, uh, how would that work in terms of uh, if you use a, an external hard drive? Uh, does it carry over or do you need to wipe it completely? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, I think you'll have to wipe it. I don't think they'll let you carry the PS4 games on your hard drive over. Hmm. I think they'll make you uh, re download them again. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to renew the license. Uh, Madge is having burgers for lunch, just saying. Jealous, jealous. Uh, style. John says, Xbox has a new system, not just smart delivery, but where you buy a console and all the codes, etc. tied to the console's ID. We did cover this the other week, and I didn't like the sound of it. Um, well, it... I, I didn't mind it, but that's only for bundles, isn't it? Like, you can't just pick up a console that doesn't come with any games and then expect to have the IDs attached to it. That's only if you bought, like, the £99 Xbox, uh, Xbox One now. Uh, where you get Sea of Themes, Farza, and Minecraft on it, and then they're automatically attached yeah, to the console. To the account, like, yeah. Once you like yeah. register you're on that account, this this account, uh, this console has never been used before. It also comes with, blah, and then it puts them straight into your account. Yeah. Like you say though, bundles only. Um, so you get rid of that Xbox that you keep Sea of Thieves and so on. They don't get those because it's a one-time code. But how does that work with Madden then? So if you get Madden, how does how do you link that to your account in a way that so so like say if you put it in uh how does that recognize that this is the first time this this disc of madden because not all discs are printed with any unique individual identifiers that's why the data comes separately on a piece of card when you've got a dlc code or something within the sleeve uh you enter that code what's to stop someone else from using that disc then after you've entered that code if you carry on playing digitally it's just it's it's difficult it is difficult um i mean i understand completely why ea um don't allow you to take a physical format into a digital uh version going forward it it, it, it does make sense because it's a separate medium whilst it's the same console and the same ecosystem it is a separate medium of delivery um so yeah i think that that it's actually in the grand scheme of things it's quite a small thing really because it's it's a cross generation at, at what what is basically a launch title we know it's not well it will be i suppose because it's coming out before the, the console actually comes out i imagine um so it will only happen for one game over a generation maybe although no maybe it maybe maybe they might have it for the next couple of years to be fair because maybe madden 2022 uh, will have the same thing because i'm no, no doubt that'll still come out on the ps4 on the PS5, but even still, I reckon it'll be a an issue that that does decrease in size in size pretty rapidly. But there's a lot of things people like to get angry at EA for, but I don't think that's really something that that is their problem. Um, yeah, because they are giving options and stuff. It's if you want digital to digital, it's like it's almost on par with. Well, I bought Madden for the PS4. Why can't I play it on my? Uh, Xbox Series X because you know it's got a disc drive. It's like it's just a different format. It's, it's so it's almost the same thing as that. I know that's the same generation, like cross generation, uh, cross platform, should I say? Um, but cross platform is a different thing, just like cross generation is a different thing. So uh, as well as different formats. So yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not angry at EA for that. I do think it, I do think it's reasonable. Um, with ultra ultraviolet, it's about three quid extra with the digital version, or at least it was for my Tremors five disc. A bit of bit of extra information. David bought Tremors Five. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move forward. Speaking about digital and things like that, let's keep on that track as we jump into the next bit of news. Sticking with VGC as well. Written by Tom Ivan for VGC. This article says DC's August digital event will include game announcements. Warner has previously teased a new. Oh, mate, let's just take this off screen so we can look at Batman game. Oh, da, da, da. <laughs> 
Uh, Warner Brothers uh, will host a digital event called DC Fandom this summer, featuring new announcements from its games, film, and TV, and comics divisions. Started at 10 a.m. PT and 6 p.m. BST on Saturday, August 26th, and running for 24 hours. Woo! The event is billed as the largest gathering of talent, announcement, and content rivals in the history of DC. Accessible via DCFandom.com, it will also include panels, exclusive screenings, and never-before-seen footage. Uh, prior to the show's cancellation, w Games, uh, WB Games was reportedly lining up a trio of high-profile reveals for what have, would have been its first ever E3 conference this month. These are said to include uh, a new Batman title, an open-world Harry Potter game, and the next project from Batman Arkham developer Rocksteady Studios. After more than seven months of teasing... Uh, after seven months of teasing a Batman uh, game reveal, Arkham Origin Studio W Games Montreal recently told fans to stay tuned to its social channels. Warner Brothers Interactive, which owns Rocksteady and Mortal Kombat developer NetherRealm, is reportedly up for sale. According to CNBC, blah, 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 we've gone through that bit already earlier on in the week. So, DC Fandom, August 22nd, 24-hour event covering games, films, TV, comics. Bib, thoughts? My immediate thought was, knowing my look and everybody else's look that I've been waiting for a new Batman game, it would just be an announcement of a new playable character in Injustice, or there will be a new Injustice game. Um, but it, it, it's looking promising. We've, we talked the other day about um, there's been teasers on socials for a new Batman game, and I just hope it's a new, a proper Batman game, and not a, a, a fighter like Injustice. We'll see. I'm not holding my breath because this has been going on for so long now. Um, so we'll wait, we'll, we'll wait, we will wait, we will wait. <laughs> I'm excited uh, though. I know, I know Asim's like losing his shit at the same time, but let's <laughs> hope. Um, interesting thing is, uh, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip to a story that was just breaking. Uh, I'll keep this on because it's actually, it's a, it's probably a story that could lead, but I'm gonna jump into it anyway. Yeah. Um, it's this one. So Fortnite Season 3 Aquaman Challenges uh, use a whirlpool at the Fortilla by James Billcliffe for VG247. So this, like I say, a standalone article on itself about the new Fortnite season. Uh, the Wet n Wild Season 3 is here and with it another DC superhero has landed in Fortnite. Aquaman! Uh, perfectly suited to the new aquatic surroundings, the Aquaman skin is unlocked by completing five hidden challenges throughout the islands and here's what to do. Um, so there, that... I won't go through this, I just wanted to show it that the new season has been announced and it does have an Aquaman basis. So there we go. New, if you're playing Fortnite, new content! Ta -da! But the reason for me jumping into that is, I mean, if there's a DC event that's going to be lasting 24 hours that features announcements from games, film, TV, comic divisions, me and Big were talking about it before this went live on air and didn't even, didn't even consider this whilst we were, could we be expecting new Aquaman content if, if he's just been featured in the biggest video game in the world. Mm. Mm. Um, Injustice 2 development is over. Mortal Kombat 11 uh, development continues. So we'll have to be there. <laughs> I know, it, it, you just never know, do you? You just never know. Um, so yes. Uh, anyone Anyone got any guesses what would be in DC's Fandom event? This, for those of you that might have missed it, starts at 6pm Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, and you think, oh, nice Saturday evening event. Jobs are good and we could sit down, have a nice brew, watch that. It lasts 24 hours. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! That's so... a long brew. You're going to get that coffee machine behind you whirling all day. No, you just you just need one of those uh, Sports Direct mugs and you're fine. <laughs> that lasts you 24 hours. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, anyway, drop drop your predictions in the chat. We'll we'll leave that one. That kind of is spell, uh, self explanatory but without um, any more to go on that one. All we know is we'll we'll save the excitement for when we do get confirmation of ba uh, Batman and stuff because then then we'll just hear. Well, I said we won't hear anything. I'd say, we, I'd say we'd hear Bibby's high pitch, eh, but his RTX uh, voice will probably eliminate <laughs> it. So we'll just have. Yeah. You'd hear it through your microphone if your windows are open. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of Manchester. There's an air raid siren going off. Silent, <laughs> Silent Hill outside. <laughs> uh, okay, let's jump in. Next bit of news. Um, the oh, that was a nice. That was oh. a double dunk of that. Yeah, fast. Pow, pow. Um, this is our last one. Then, uh, isn't it? I think we might have one more afterwards. Let me have a quick check. Let's no, you double dunk that one. Uh, oh, did? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh nice. We, we might be under an hour for the first time in a million years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, final bit of news. Let me full screen it for you. The Witcher 3 is giving PS4 and Xbox owners a free PC copy to experience it in all its glory. You won't have to toss a coin to GOG for this deal. Wee, banter, banter. Written by Taylor Lyles for The Verge. The article goes on to say, PS4 and Xbox One owners now have the chance to play the PC version of The Witcher 3 at no extra cost. I mean, that in itself, just that one line, I've not, I don't, I've not read through this, so I don't know the details, but all I'm going to say is, just at this point of the article, gee, fucking gee, uh, CD Projekt Red um, know what they're doing with video games and how to, like, reward your communities. But anyway, I'll jump back in again. The Witcher 3 originally released in 2015 on all three of those platforms, but the PC version is arguably the best way to experience the game. Console versions were limited to an average frame rate of around 30 FPS and screen resolutions as low as 720p on the original Xbox One and 900p on PS4. Though the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X versions would receive 4K resolution and HDR support a few years later, some visual details took a hit, so it's still worth checking out on PC for better graphics alone. Better performance is not the only reason console owners should snag it on PC. Downloadable fan-made mods can add numerous things not previously found in the game, such as more loot from defeated creatures or obscure add-ons like chicken helmets for your NPCs. Obviously, standard. Uh, even owners of the PC version can snag the extra copy, uh, which you can gift it to a friend. Even if you want uh, if you want to keep it for yourself, GOG provides a DRM-free copy, unlike Steam or the Epic Games Store. Additionally, GOG will also throw in a few extra digital goodies like the game's soundtrack too. Uh, though the giveaway might seem a little weird, it's not necessarily a charity. It could be a way to get more people to try out the GOG distribution platform, which is owned by CD Projekt, the publisher of The Witcher games, ahead of the upcoming release uh, of the company's next big game, Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, and there we have it. Uh, now, until June 23rd at 7am ET, you can claim a copy through the company's GOG Galaxy desktop game library app. Sadly, Switch owners got snubbed for this promotion. GOG claims it's because there's no Nintendo Switch integration, and that's a shame considering The Witcher 3's cross-save system that lets you take your PC progress on the go. Bib. <laughs> I'm literally just about to do this now, so you're going to see firsthand whether or not this actually works. Uh, uh, but I already had the GOG a desktop app anyway, uh, because that's how I played The Witcher 1. Um, but I'm literally just about to try and figure out if this will actually work or not. I mean, it's, I mean I'm mean, i going to continue talking so we're not having any dead air, but it's straight off the bat this is absolutely amazing news um for those of you that may that i mean i much would have preferred to play it on pc but every time i went to look at it on pc it was always full price whereas on the playstation it was like three quid when i bought it i uh, I, I i have died on my own stream <laughs> my, what do you mean my own face in in my uh preview is frozen <laughs> oh great style uh okay kill my camera bring it back there we go yeah <laughs> I was just, I was just there, like, yeah, <laughs> but it's fine. fine. Connection to the server timed out. Great start. So I was, I was, so I was. Do you know, I'm gonna admit my ignorance there. I was too busy. I saw an opportunity to be a bad dad with a dad joke, uh, and and just stopped to take it. Chloe has woke up uh, and decided to jump on Fortnite, um, and she's just texted me to let me know that she's bought the battle pass. But naturally, autocorrect got involved. And it said, I've just bought the cattle pass. So, <laughs> so I, naturally, I've just responded saying, you want some cows? Question mark. <laughs> She's going to see that in a bit. And I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so anyway. Still finished already? Uh, no, she doesn't go in on a Wednesday. Wednesday's the uh, COVID deep clean day. So it's a Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday off to fully clean the school and then back in Thursday, lucky. Friday. Um, so yeah, you were saying, GOG. Yes. I have the GOG desktop anyway, because that's how I was playing the the Witcher 1, and that's how I got Saints Row uh, 2 as well on there. GOG is a very good place to be able to pick up your games, because they're really, really cheap on there. So, I mean, I've got to do all these stupid verify, you know, where they tick all the pictures of the buses. So I'm, I'm just going through all this shit at the moment. So do you have the Witcher 3 on console already? I do, I have it on PS4. Ah, okay. So you're going to get me the PC version, is that what you're saying? Um... <laughs> It's alright, it's, it's fine, it's fine, I know when I'm not loved. <laughs> I, mean, good. I mean, this will be a great time if it's on sale on, play, on, on the PlayStation to pick it up now. Um, and then you can play it on PC for the same price. It's probably a piece of, of that. It's probably a piece of, uh, cheaper on PC anyway to just buy it than rather than buying it for PlayStation. 
Uh, oh no, because I when I picked it up on PlayStation, it was like three quid. Oh really? Yeah. Baggy. That's what I mean. So I'm, I'm double dipping. It, the server key is on time now because I've got to do this stupid, shitty verifying, like tick all the pictures of the bus, tick all the traffic lights. I've got an idea for a stream going forward, by the way. A new series on ice cream uploads. We could just call it, uh, just like Bibby gets verified. Uh, and then we basically all just sit and watch Bibby try to log into different websites using verification things and watch him get more and more, more and more frustrated as it goes. <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. Why do they do this? Like, it's obviously me, my password's right. Why do I need to verify all this shit? Oh, it's not. It just keeps on timing out. You know what? Fuck it. I, I'm not asked about having it on my PC, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So that Joke. we tried to finish the show with a little bit of news, telling people that you can get The Witcher free for free. Uh, and uh, there you go, there you go. Uh, guns, Guntaku. Well, long time no see. Uh, hey, I just got out of the hospital, so I thought I'd say hello before heading for a nap. Uh, I'm fine though, kidney stone. Just had to get surgery. Why do I feel like this is going into a joke? <laughs> just is this serious or not? Because you usually come in with some sort of like one-liners. So I need to ask. It's not a joke. Oh, no, but it's not. If it's a kidney stone. <laughs> uh, oh, you're all right, pal. But yeah, thanks, thanks for dropping in, especially uh, after you've just been to the hospital. Uh, hopefully it was all gone. Uh, got rid of quite easily. Uh, but yeah, I, I used to like watching the gogs. As you can tell, David is related to me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anyway, reminders, if, if you didn't catch that, The Witcher 3, um, if you have it on the PS4 or the Xbox, uh, the Xbox One that is, uh, make sure that you uh, check out, uh, did it, it did say you can get it on all formats, didn't it? Uh, so, da, da, da. if you want to keep it for yourself, GOG, GOG provides a DRM free copy, unlike Steam or the Epic Game Store, so you can get it on Steam and the Epic Game Store, um, but GOG will give it you DRM free and will also throw in a few extra digital goodies like like the game soundtrack too, which is not surprising because as it confirms in this article, GOG is owned by CD Projekt, the company behind the Witcher games. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty good move though. I mean, like I said from the beginning, the sentiment side of things is good. Um, CD Projekt were the first to come out to mention free upgrades for cross-gen. They don't believe in gamers having to pay for the game twice just because they want to play it on two different formats so cd project red uh, cd project should say smashing it in terms of the messaging there but now giving away the witcher that's good from a from a, another community focused message point but it's it's smart in terms of like epic did epic basically launched the epic game store on the back of the success of fortnite uh, cd project are trying to use witcher and no doubt cyberpunk as well uh, to launch their platform gog so it's it's good to see um developers kind of getting into the game and offering more competition and i know there's a lot of a lot of complaints between having multiple launches which i mean i'm not i don't agree with those complaints myself it's variety is the spice of life but but yeah. more more launches equals a better spread of games equals more potential um for competition which could mean less price i mean the downside is that you will see things like uh EA trying to force people to just use Origin, uh, which is a was a lesser platform or format. Although apparently it's not too bad, I believe. Um, but uh, on on not not problematic anymore. But you can get monopolistic prices if they start to launch, uh, launch them on their own launcher as opposed to multiple things. But anyway, long story short, get yourself the Witcher for free. Um, I mean, I could play a joke since I have a string uh, a, a string there from a sten. I could make a puppet on porn. <laughs> Like the full on, is it a banjo string? Wait, uh, joke. Um, Gog is class. Uh, it was the best filler show on BBC Two. Uh, it's, it's a long old time ago. Does anyone even know what the Gogs is? I, no. Yeah, I think that's just a me and David thing. I don't think anyone else. Uh, see, if, I, will the internet even know the Gogs? I, the internet remembers. The internet remembers. Uh, it was like a. Oh, let me just bring the thing up on screen for those of you. There you go. The Gogs was uh, an animation season uh, that had basically four episodes um, from the 21st of December 1993 to the 25th of December 1993, and it resonates in David's memory. That looks like a penis. 
That actually looks like a penis. Anyway, off screen before TOS. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, there we go. Uh, string goes from my Wii all the way to the inside of my kidney while it heals. I mean, that, that, that takes the piss. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Anyway, we're going to wrap things up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone, for being here in the stream. One hour exactly. That's, a, that's unusual. You just stretched that last bit out so you could say that it's been one hour. No, because it's one hour and one minute now. I'd, have, I'd have liked to have done it 50 seconds ago. I didn't realise it just took a bit of time at the top of the screen. <laughs> and it's not like this. Uh, but we are going to wrap things up. We're going to drop off, but we're going to come back on again very, very shortly for episode 15 of Masters of the League. You don't have to worry about the numbers, especially when you consider the fact that we are approaching the end of the season with Ice Cream Uploads Football Club. So if you want to watch some football content, stick around. Myself and Babe, co-managers of ICUFC, will be back uh, to see... Not, not not right up to the end of the season, but we're approaching it. We're going to play our last few games. It's the penultimate stream before the end of the season. That will take place on Friday, our final Masters of the League episode of the week. But as I say, we're going to drop off now. So, um, yeah, feel free to hit the follow button if you're new here and you haven't done already. That way you will get notified when we do go live, not only... In, a, in about 10-15 minutes when, we, when we've got the green screen and everything set up for Masters of the League. But also um, Friday when we go live again or tomorrow morning when we come back with a scoop or anything like that. So make sure you hit the follow, follow button. That's the way to be best notified when we do go live. But before we drop off, Bib, is there anything yeah. that you would like to add? Yes, of course. If you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of your choice, then do feel free to tag in at we've got to be in your at Graham underscore day and of course at ice cream uploads uh we'll take your fast impressions and then give our fast impressions and the very next show which will be at what time tomorrow mr graham day 10 a.m ish, ish. <laughs> ish. <laughs> why did i i can hear my own voice coming back through why did I... Have you just opened I something in your PC? Voice coming back through? I have not. Have you just opened something in your PC? I'm still trying to do this stupid fucking <laughs> verification shit. Uh, I, I was uh, just clicking through my tabs, closing out the news tabs that we had open, and I had Twitch open, so I was getting our own feed through. <laughs> but Twitch, for those of you that don't use Twitch in the browser, if you have a Twitch browser open um, before a channel fully loads, it doesn't start the stream kind of thing. Until you click on it, then it just kicks out through. So, yeah, that's why I was hearing my own voice coming through the stream. But there we go. Um, Chappers Man, good morning. He says, uh, uh, funnily enough, I was just about to ask when the next Master... Uh, when Master League would be next. Well, in about 15 minutes, maybe. Maybe give or take, depending on how long it takes us to get refreshed, brewed, and get the green screen and everything up in place. So not, not very long at all. Uh... The verification of one Bibby and the uploads of ice cream coming to cinemas 2022. Yeah, we need uh, we need to make it more like uh, more more edgy though. Like uh, rather than supersize me, we need to like verify me or ver verify me, bro, or whatever, something like that. It's just just Bibby doing increasingly more and more difficult Google verification things like the captures and stuff like that. Words, letters, and which one of these is a sidewalk? And it's like, it's a yeah. fucking road! They're all roads, I don't know. The only one that I've had problems with so far, and I've managed to link Uplay, Steam, Origin, Epic Game Store, and Xbox. The only one that I've had problems with is stupid fucking PlayStation. The stupid capture thing. I'm getting wound up now. I as you can tell. No, we could we couldn't tell Bib. We couldn't tell Woosa. Woosa. Anyway. Anyway, our own Epic Game Store Arc is free at the moment, so grab that. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm gonna go do that as well. Arc Survival Evolved is free until is it till tomorrow or is it free today until next week? I can't remember, but I've just seen it as it's logged me in, so I've just picked it up. No, well, I will do that too. Go off, grab yourself Arc Survival Evolved, and if you've got yourself Witcher on console, make sure you get your free download on PC as well. You might as well, it's free, take it. Take it. Uh, nice version. Dude, where's my verification? <laughs> yes. Yes, we'll have that one. Sold. Magic Man with the titles. There we go. Anyway, have yourselves a lovely day, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to stick around for Pez, we will be back for Masters of the League very, very soon. The channel will go offline, but we'll come back online. So don't worry about that. If it does go off, that's the plan. That's the plan. So we can get the, uh, the uh, podcast all fixed and stuff. But until then, what have they got to do, babe? You've got to stay frosty.